the more that you go, that gun's gonna heat up and the, the, those old shells are not gonna fall out so easily. They're gonna be hot, they're gonna stick in the cylinder, you're gonna have to like kind of pry them out. Pretty similar. It looks kind of lean, like, it a, is like very... a thin body design. Yeah, so that's a single stag magazine which allows for a very thin gun, you know. There's no way you can keep firing a 12 gauge handheld. The recoil is immense, you know. Just kill your arm and you Yeah, your wrist. You're gonna break your wrist before our too long. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Total Recoil. In this episode, we're gonna talk a little bit more about firearms and video games. I'm Israel Wright, your host, former Green Beret, and with me once again is Captain Lars Whalen. I'm Captain Lars. Uh, I've been lucky enough to work with Special Forces for more than 20 years, defending various marine assets around the world. Today we're gonna to talk about Red Dead Redemption 2. We're gonna look at some gameplay footage and a couple of the firearms that you use in the game. Have you ever uh, experienced it? you played through this? I have not played this one, but I am excited for it. I love the Old West time period. I love the firearms that time frame, uh, this is gonna be cool. Uh, right on, let's get it. Single action revolver. Yeah. Oh, so that's a break open. So it's probably the uh, Smith & Wesson Model 3. Indiana Jones used a similar uh, rifle to that break open revolver, you know. Take out that sword wheeling guy. Uh, yeah, that's that's right, that's yeah. right. So you're out in the wilderness, right? There's, you're looking at clean and dirty versions of this, you know, uh, out there, wilderness and stuff like that. What are they, some of the things you think about trying to maintain like a, a weapon, you know? Well, I would like it to look better than that because <laughs> that, that's pretty rusty and crusty. <laughs> But uh, you want to keep it oiled, and then you want to, to minimize where the um, residue from the burning power powder is. You want to minimize that buildup so uh, that uh, things aren't getting clogged up. Would that be towards the breach, kind of in there? Where oh, the, look, you cleaned it. Oh, there we go. It's much better now. It's that easy, folks. That's, that's right. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is that easy <laughs> if it's rusty, but okay. Yeah, towards the breach, absolutely. In a revolver, you want to make sure that like the front of that cylinder is not getting clogged up. So like as the bullets go in, they're not hanging up, going sliding into the cylinder. Looks like he's shooting kind of long range, pretty viable with a revolver like this. I would feel like that would be pressing it for the range right there. Mm. So maybe we're at a hundred feet. If you didn't have anything else, if you had a rifle, I'd use it. <laughs> right. You ever worked with speed loaders with revolvers and things like that? Yeah, they're great. I mean, that's a standard uh, police issue. You know, these uh, it's a, a little plastic clip. So let you line up six bullets and then just uh, drop it in. It's almost like having a magazine. Uh, he's shooting with one one hand. Yeah, pretty easy to do, or is it more Hollywood to kind of like one-handed shot? You know? It's definitely more more Hollywood. Like you know, if I had two hands available to do it, I would use two hands because right. you're going to steady the gun. You're right. going to have a more accurate shot. Right. Now, when you use your bullet time ability, do you go for the main shot or the hand shot? When you slow down time mentally during a gunfight mm. and everything goes yellow. I usually go for headshots. Yeah, you know, if I can slow down time this much, I think I would just leap. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Now you guys can fight it out without me. <laughs> oh, very effective. Oh, yeah, let's go. That's good. He's good at, good at reloading. He's well practiced at reloading. Yeah, right. The only thing is, like, the more that you go, that gun's going to heat up, and the, the, those old shells are not going to fall out so easily after uh, all these rounds. Oh, okay. You know? A little yeah. bit of a warped kind of. Yeah, well, they're going to be hot. They're going to stick in the cylinder. You're going to have to, like, kind of pry them out. But that doesn't mean that you can't, like, you know, if one hangs up, you can still put five in and put it right back. If people are shooting at you, you don't have to wait and get that one out. Nice yeah. thing about the revolver. You got any decorated guns, any kind of uh, engravings or anything like on that? Yeah, I have a 45 that's got a scorpion carved into right the handle, on. made by Olympic Arms. It's pretty nice. cool. Yeah. A repeater? What did this say? Yeah, so this looks like a Winchester, probably in 1873, and it has an octagon barrel, which uh, I have on mine, which is my favorite. Oh, I cool. love that, you know. It's just old school. It makes for a heavier barrel, so it doesn't heat up as much, but it is heavier, too. He's loading into the magazine tube there, so he opened the little window and loaded it in, I think. Yeah, I think those are 22s, and that takes like 22 of the 22s. Which is very oh, a lot of both. Okay, of Litchfield Repeater. Of course, that, that's not the real name. This is a this is a Winchester, so I think that's 1873. So they must. Uh, I wonder if they had some like copyright thing since Winchester is still around. But great rifle, very effective, very unlikely to jam. Lever action, very nice, and it looks like that might be a takedown model, which is uh, very cool, which lets you split the gun in half. Oh, so you can carry one part in the yep. saddlebag, yeah. you know, right. one part in the, okay. Very nice, yeah. Uh, you have any insight on, you know, we have like, what is it, uh, CLP? They used to use animal oils too. Like you'd oh, actually really? use whale oil, you could use beaver oil, like anything that lubricates you can use, but it might make for a kind of a smelly, uh, smelly <laughs> weapon. 
beaver oil. Good old beaver yeah. shots is coming to town. I can smell them from a mile away. God, he's got optics on there. Does, that looks like optics on the... Oh, a little like kind of a, like a yeah. canted uh, yeah. sight right there? Yeah. The hard thing would be keeping the, the optics from getting misaligned by the recoil. So like the shock absorption of the glass itself to keep it keep it all lined up. Or maybe right. they just used it for magnification to like not with an actual rectangle in there. Right. Yeah. Hey, could that be re why it looks like it's side mounted or do you think that's just maybe not uh... I think it's side mounted so that he can still use the iron sights. Okay. Maybe he's a little suspicious of that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the I don't trust them scopes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would trust that scope that either. Magical... Oh look it does have a rectangle though. Okay, cool. And recoil, looking like it's uh, pretty, pretty good looking. Yeah, absolutely. And this will be a stout cartridge, I'm sure. You know, because this is a hunting rifle. I mean, I say the same thing when I say bullet and cartridge. Is there a difference between? When people say bullet, they're really talking about the the whole the whole thing. So you have a cartridge, you know, a primer, and then the cartridge. The cartridge is holding the powder and holding the bullet at the end of it. The bullet is what actually travels. You right. know. I think that's a German gun. I think it's Luger? called the Luger. No, it's before the Luger. It starts with a B, and I'm missing it. <laughs> but it has that. I think it has that same finger action, which is super weird. It's like so, instead of the bolt just going back, it, it, the finger action goes up like this and then back oh, down. Oh, you know? interesting. It's very. Yep. So he, he just pulled yeah, it, and you can it see up. it pulls up at an angle. I think that's a big spring at the back that's powering that finger action. Look at that thing. I have not fired that, but I would like to. <laughs> I, would, I would hope that it would be uh, in better condition, though. Might be still around today? Oh, Ooh. yeah, they're definitely still okay. around. People love these as far as collector's items. You just take like, a little cloth, you just wipe that's it, it, it and it just goes away. So man. I need this magic cloth. <laughs> that, that's the business, that thing. <laughs> magic oil cloth. It seems like it, that the upper part goes way far past our grip. Yeah, and they actually, I think the German army used this as a, uh, as a rifle as well. Like, they just put a rifle stock on. Oh, wow. Mm, dual wielding. No, not, not, not a fan? Not, not for me, no. <laughs> like, I, that means I'm gonna miss with two guns, for sure. <laughs> you know, like, I don't think so. Plus, like, reloading is a pain in the ass then, too. Like, even with an automatic here, you have to, like, put right. one down to put, get the other magazine out. Right. The dual wielding, generally, you know, we see it so much in pop culture, video games, anime, movies. Is it really just kind of a fantasy of, like, two guns is way better than one gun, you know? If you had the two guns, what you'd be much better off to is shoot one until it gets hot, <laughs> and then put it aside, shoot the other one. Sure. And anybody can practice anything enough to be able to do it well. I don't know if it's much of a factor, but uh, you know, like you see these guys, the reaction to getting shot, you know, is a kind of Hollywood kind of thing, or more of a caliber kind of thing, or like. Uh, well, you know. yeah, I mean, you know, Newton's uh, what is it? The first law. It's like for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> So what's interesting when you think about that is when you're firing your M4, the amount of force that's hitting the person is the exact same amount of force that's hitting your shoulder. The uh. difference is like how much concentrated it is to get through and penetrate, you right, know? Right. The size of the charge is like how much it hits you is how much it's gonna hit them. Mm -hmm. So when you do see them, somebody fly 20 feet through the air, well, if you didn't fly 20 feet <laughs> through the air, then that's not realistic. Ah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah. So this is a precursor to the 1911, which is interesting. I mean, that's kind of the form that everything took after this, with this brownie design, but it's pretty similar. It looks kind of lean, like, it a, is like very... a thin body design. Yeah, so that's a single stack magazine, which allows for a very thin gun, you know. Same as the 1911, actually. I think this was a 41 caliber, 44 caliber, something like that, but a short shell, so not what we think of as a 44, with like a big 44 magnum. Mm -hmm. Whoa, look at the... That's a, such a weird profile. Narrow profile, yeah. <laughs> It'd be great to carry though, because it's like be nearly invisible. Almost like on a concealed bonnet. carry yeah, kind of right. weapon. <laughs> What's the uh, oldest gun that you've ever shot? The lever action that I have that was made in 1894, which uh, is great. So that's you know 135 years old or something. But I have shot some black powder weapons too, so I'm not sure how old those would be. How do you like the, uh, what are the, the recoil and the heaviness, the sound maybe? I think that's pretty appropriate. It's an interesting sight, like the deep V-notch sight there. It's such a cool mix of technology with the wagons, you know, yeah. they're using a semi-automatic pistol, and it, it is time appropriate. So it wasn't called the 1899 though, that was based on, I think it was called the 1900. They um, might be getting away with uh, copyright stuff that's, like That's this right, yeah. There's a lot more smoke coming out of these cartridges, which uh -huh. is realistic, because like, uh, 
I don't think smokeless powder was as big a thing then as it is now. So you're getting like little clouds of smoke every time he fires. You're talking about the actual gunpowder inside the cartridge itself? That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if I was in that time frame, I would prefer a revolver just because it would be such new technology, this automatic and like doing any any kind of repairs or anything out <laughs> in the Old West is like, you're gonna bring it into a gun shop and they what the hell is this thing, you know? <laughs> Some uh, snake oil there, put you back on top. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> then you can clean your gun with it. Yeah, that was the sharps that that guy had on his back. That was one that they used for uh, buffalo hunting. Wielding again, a revolver. And see, this one on the right is a single action, which means every time he's got to cock it with his thumb. Can you imagine trying to keep track of that? Like you're <laughs> firing both hands, and one of them you have to keep cocking every round. <laughs> I don't want to do math during a gunfight. Do they manufacture them that way, or do you have to make them saw that shotgun? Um, either you can buy them manufacture that way, but then you have to, I believe you have to have a class three permit, which means it's the same as buying like a, a machine gun. <laughs> Is that because it, they can be easily concealed, and or, or it's a... Uh... You know, I think it's actually more just that it's, uh, uh, people have this image of it. Like a switchblade knife is, I think they're becoming more illegal now, but they were incredibly illegal for a long time, but they're not really any more dangerous than a regular Right, knife, right. You know? They just have this image of being uh, used by the criminal element. They got like, it looks like a little fire blast, a little bit of a flame out there. And that's 100% realistic because there's a lot of gunpowder in that shotgun shell and there's not a lot of space for it to burn up in that length of the shotgun. Mm. So you will get a big flash of uh, flame out the end of it. Oh, I hate this part. Oh, I've watched this footage before. It's so brutal. He's like blowing off arms and legs and people are like crying Jesus out. Jesus, what? Yeah, gone. There's no way you could keep firing it. 12 gauge handheld, like over and over again. The recoil is in, immense on it, you know. Just kill your arm and you Yeah, your wrist. Your wrist, you're gonna break your wrist before our too long. Put him out of his misery. Oh no, right in the, oh. oh. Just walking down those stairs is gonna be incredibly difficult after the scene. Cause uh. there's blood <laughs> everywhere. Very slippery. See, like a slip and slide on stairs. Oh my gosh. Rough. Seems like it has the design of the bolt action rifle or any of these weapons that you've seen changed very much. Uh, so one thing that's a little different, I, I don't know if you can see, but as he pushes it forward, the, there's actually like a hammer like you would have on a revolver that right. stays back in the cocked position. Now most of that on a bolt action is gonna be internal and you'll never see it like that. But this, this rifle, you can see it hangs back. It almost uh, looks like he has a side-loaded ammo uh, box right there. Kind of pulls it out and yeah, a lot of them there. are going to be integral to the firearm itself, right? Oh, he's got a little trap door, but that's usually you load them in one at a time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I hate oh. that. What are we... <laughs> Who is this? Who are you? No, don't... No. Oh, that looked like Wolverine, too. He probably just... <laughs> oh, no. Kill you. No, don't... Oh, oh man. God, his legs just disappeared. He's going to throw that bucket at you, and you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Focus on the firearm. Focus on the firearm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what is happening? Yeah. We're just going on a killing spree. Gloves, uh, preference, needed, uh, helpful. I like gloves, okay. especially if you're in a wet environment. So then you've got the hard metal and uh, the grips are often going to be checkered. So it's like almost sanding your hands, especially if you're you know, getting wet. You're going to have red raw hands. So I appreciate the, the gloves myself. Pump action shotgun. Pump action shotgun. Very nice. The slide comes out. It yeah. does. And see, it's cocking the hammer as it comes back. Very effective. I like that because you can drop the hammer if you're traveling with it and still keep one in the chamber. Not really changed in uh, 100 Pump years? Action. No, they're, they're remarkably similar. The, the only difference is like if you have a modern, like Mossberg 500 is a popular pump action small shotgun like this. All that stuff's going to be internal now just because uh, it's going to reduce the chances of it fouling. Oh, okay. So you won't see the hammer hanging yeah. up like that. Oof. Poor sweeping guy. He was this sick, sadistic man. All right, lots of fun. Uh, Lars, uh, what were your thoughts on the firearms that we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2? It's interesting in particular how they used actual firearms and then just changed them just a little bit, the names and everything. Um, but it's nice to see the history of firearms in there and uh, and they seemed really real realistic. Well, thanks everybody. That's all we have for you today. Let us know in the comments section what kind of content you would like to see in future episodes of Total Recoil. 
And if you want to see more great content from Gameology, go ahead and check out their Facebook and their YouTube page. And if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. And I want to just give a special thanks to VME, Veterans in Media and Entertainment. They are a group that helps former and current military people break into the entertainment industry in all sorts of ways. They're the ones that got me hooked up with the Gameology people. And we just want to say a special thanks to them. They're a great organization. Go ahead and check them out at vmeconnect.org. I rickrolled my, my chat on the start of my stream. Really? really? Yeah. So. That's so funny, I totally missed that whole wave, but it's like totally a thing to like, check out this cool video of cats. Oh yeah, yeah. Never gonna get you, never gonna get you.